Well, we have just come into the small village of Pill, which is on the Avon Mouth, the Avon, the Avon Mouth, um, and we're here to see another bridge, and this is quite an interesting bridge, this one, because it's uh, purely concrete, no frills, but still really, really high, and it's worth going and taking a look at. And you can see it from here, it's the Avon Mouth Bridge. Pill foreshore and this is where the River Avon meets the River Severn estuary in the Bristol Channel and um, it's quite an impressive bridge this one it's lovely long grass here look we're gonna we're walking through as we sort of make our way towards the bridge it should snack it's course tell you what it's quiet so hopefully we'll be able to get some good drone footage on this one with any luck. A lot of this meadow is actually tidal, but lucky for us, um, the tide is out today. Well, at this time. Well here I am underneath the Avon Mouth Bridge and it looks absolutely outstanding. So it's got, it's built on these two big piers as you can see and it just towers above me. Roaring above is the M5 motorway. see the deterioration in the concrete look on the bottom of these pier bridge piers that's a bit worrying isn't it but you can see the metal through in this huge big crack that's running up as well The M5 was built in various sections during the late 1960s, 1970s and this particular section involved the River Avon. So a bridge was designed to cross this um, navigable um, waterway and it was actually designed by Fairfield Maybe and built by Tarmac Construction. The bridge design is a box girder bridge and it's 1,388 metres long and had a distance from the water of 30.5 metres. It was opened in May 1974. The design of the bridge was to create a hump 
which allowed tall ships to pass underneath the bridge. This was also seen at the Thelwall Viaduct further up on the M6. the famous Clifton Suspension Bridge, Bristol, over the River Avon. And nearer the coast, a few miles away, the newly completed Avonmouth Bridge is now opening to traffic. It brings into use the final link in the M5 to complete over 300 miles of continuous motorway from Bridgewater in Somerset and north to Carlisle. The way clear ahead after a long series of problems and delays. The new bridge has an overall length of 4,550 feet and in the end will carry dual three-lane carriageways with hard shoulders, a cycle track and footway. It's a nice road but as the price of petrol escalates and supplies remain in foreign sands, the time may come and we'll need that North Sea oil to be able to use it. Steel workers were killed yesterday after plunging 25 metres from a gantry above one of Britain's busiest motorways. The health and safety executive is investigating the accident which happened when part of the gantry below the Avonmouth Bridge near Bristol collapsed. The emergency services went to the scene at the southern end of the bridge but the men were dead on arrival at hospital. 40 witnesses, some of whom have tried to help the victims, were taken to hospital suffering from shock. According to Avon and Somerset Police, four men will not be named until the next of kins have been informed. They were a 23-year-old from Newcastle, a 38-year-old from Glasgow and a 40-year-old from Middlesbrough and a 42-year-old from Newport, South Wales. They were carrying out specialist work as part of a multi-million pound contract to strengthen the bridge which carries the M5 over the Avon. Work on widening and strengthening the One Mile Bridge began in June 1995 and it's due to be completed the end of 1996. A spokesman for the Health and Safety Executive said it is not known why the gantry had come away from the bridge. At 11 metres the section was left dangling beneath the bridge. The names were later released. Paul Stewart, 
23 from Newcastle, Andrew Rogers 40 from Middlesbrough, Ronald Hill 38 from Glasgow and Geoffrey Williams 42 from Newport. All died of multiple injuries. The health and safety executive said that the deaths of these guys was unlawful. Costain and Caneva Cleveland Bridge, known as Yarm Road Limited, were prosecuted under the Health and Safety Act following their deaths. The inquest had heard how the brakes on the gantry the men were working on under the M5 Avermouth Bridge were not enough to stop it being blown along the beams. One end of the gantry detached from the beams so the platform was left hanging downwards throwing all four workers to the ground. 